you know this you know the rejig of the way the bank has loaned its money and the way they they it seemed to have got the formula right because suddenly now all these countries are doing well for whatever reason but it has given rise to a new problem now they are middle income economies and they are also big borrowers on the bank now that's a contradiction so does a country like india which is facing this problem right now face the risk of losing its soft borrowing windows like the ida for example two thoughts on this first of all in a country like can india doesn't really need the uh, soft uh, soft windows what india needs is access to long term financing if you look any project that the bank finances whether it's ida which is ibrd social sectors infrastructure the rates of return are extraordinarily high you know you take any road projects 36 37% uh education projects again have very high rates of return so if you have such a high rate of return why should you worry whether you are paying 3 300 basis points above libor or 400 basis point above libor or 100 basis above libor what's important is to find the financing for the project so i think uh, gradually the world will ida was created at a very particular moment in history where capital markets were functioning in a much less fluid than today uh and uh, where developing countries were at a different stage where we to get uh, they, they are today since ida was created in 1961 or 62 50 years have passed india has more than quadruple its per capita income they don't really need that what india needs is access to yeah the equivalent uh, so so i wouldn't worry too much about the softness or the non softness i think what's important is avail- availability Of course you want an a reasonable price but I wouldn't kind of torture myself with its IBRD or ITA so that's uh, uh that's I think is, a, is an important dimension okay we'll come back to that a little okay. later the uh, you know you you're an old india hand so this probably best place to answer this question uh, if you look back the economic reforms let's go right back to the beginning in the 80s when they were launched first and then incrementally they were built up till the big acceleration in 91 looking back over these three decades do you think india has really changed <clears throat> india has changed enormously i mean uh, for bad for good for worse it has changed uh, per capita income has more than doubled since uh, 91 uh, more than tripled since 1980 uh, uh, you look at all the indicators of consumption or food consumption of uh, material wealth india is much more prosperous than it was at the time so uh yes a lot has changed perhaps some habits haven't died yet and uh, but uh, particularly the habit of uh, thinking that the poor need special assistance uh but um uh no india i mean there's no question but uh, okay on a scale of 1 to 10 where are they where they where they so should i been at 8 or 9 out of 10 so where are they now i mean have they achieved what one foresaw in 1980 or you still have on a scale of 1 to 10 where are you you know this is a fact so i'm not uh, speculating i remember in the 1990s mid 90s 96 97 after the reforms very often uh, investment bankers used to come to the bank and w- we would be asked uh, will india grow like china and our answer was always no because lack of infrastructure because human uh, resource development is much behind sanitation water and you have a long list of why not and then all to everybody's surprise few years later india was again growing like china so uh, something right was done perhaps we didn't understand it but something some economic forces were unleashed uh and uh so you can put the scale you want but uh, it has exceeded at least the world bank's expectation and i think many observers expectations were overtaken by by the facts and it was quite amazing what has happened in the decade of the 2000 when uh, india gradually but persistently and the the, in, the hindu gro- rate of growth is something you know people laugh about that but um, once again we are looking at the same problems all over again infrastructure you know lack of uh, employment poverty so as this great indian rope trick you know failed it has run its course and now you need another one or? 
there, there is no question there are some structural issues that need to be addressed, and uh, and there are many. Whether it is the Land Acquisition Act, whether it is the uh, how you deal with envir environmental consequences of hydro and power and thermal and building roads and whatnot, how is it that you can build roads faster and better? How you can have this, uh, uh, Shidaran Shidaran everywhere multiplied by a hundred and uh, that would be really quite a coup. Uh, so there's no question that a lot needs to be done, but uh, uh, you know, a lot has been achieved. And, and you're not talking, you know, some people say, oh, we're in crisis again. Uh, well, it's wonderful that people feel that way, because in 91, you're really in a crisis. Uh, India had to shift its gold outside to be able to continue to service its debt, had to mortgage its gold. And uh, the foreign exchange reserves were less than a billion. It was really, growth had, you know, come down to less than 2%. So now growth less than 6% and that's a crisis. I think that's really s tells you something, tells you how expectations have changed, how ambitious, rightly ambitious India has become. And I think in some respects it's very good. That said, there are a number of things that can be done to perhaps not return to the 9-10% because the global economy is subtracting something, but certainly more than 55 <laughs>